Hello, I'm Roger Boothby from Skill Builder and I've come down to deepest, darkest Yeovil in Somerset to Triton's headquarters to look at their new work centre. And I've got Steve Hewson, the brand manager here with me to talk us through and show us the features and benefits of this latest bit of kit from Triton. So Steve, it's over to you, my friend. So the work centre was really the, the launch product for Triton back in 1976. I remember it. I'm old enough to remember that one, actually. Yeah, so originally uh, an Australian uh, innovation to fit a circular saw into a, into a saw table so you could use it for home working and for getting accurate cuts with a simple saw. And there's been several evolutions of that. Uh, the Mark III and then the Series 2000 was the, the latest one. And they were an all steel construction, um, a solid piece of kit, ideal for the workshop. Um, but it had some limitations in terms of its mobility and, and where you could go with it, what you could adapt it for. So what we've done is come up with a new generation of work centre on an entirely new frame and with a new sort of modular concept really. Yeah, yeah. I can remember that old work centre and, and as much as it was, you know, it was a, a, a good bit of kit but it was a little bit clunky, a little bit difficult to set up. You had to fiddle around quite a lot to get everything going. And this looks to me, dare I say, it's up there with the top end sort of German work centres that you, you see that the engineering looks, you know, totally different to that original uh, one that you had. Absolutely, so what we've tried to do is to bring modern materials, uh, extruded aluminium rails etc that will take accessories to bring something with new services that are hard wearing and low friction but to make the thing lightweight and portable so that it can be used in the workshop by the enthusiast but also so it's uh, suitable for the trade user to yeah. take onto site. Yeah, so we're not just talking about the hobbyist, the, the, the woody, as I would call them, the woodworker. We're talking about getting this out on site with the guys that want to rip through mouldings and, and do the odd bit of routing out on site, that kind of thing. And of course, for them, it has to be portable. That's the first thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Portable and easy to set up. So what have you got in the way of portability? So the initial table here is, is with a clamping table, but it, and it comes with a set of little positional wheels. So if you're in the workshop, you can just tilt one end and you can move that around for, for short movements. But if you want to take this out on site, the legs fold up in underneath. Yeah. Let's just turn that round to the camera so that we can get a, a little look at what we're doing here. So we've got legs. The little positional wheels more down small the wheels, here. yeah. And then you have a set of more rugged transit wheels there okay. so that when it's folded up underneath, yeah. there's a handle on this one end. You can tip it up and then you can run it through and yeah. take it through a standard well, doorway. Well, you get that through a doorway, will you? Uh, with the outfeed off and yeah. side feeds off, yeah, yeah. go through a okay. doorway. Yeah, if you're a good driver. If you're a good driver. Okay, all right, mate. So uh, we've got it set up, we're on site. We've got, what, 240 volt, is it, every 240 time? 240 volt in there. And this is um, a no volt contact so that it goes off. Yes, absolutely. So Every switch. time. So when you plug it on, when you plug it in initially, it won't just fire it won't up and fire start, all up. start no, going. Okay. So that's important. And that's your, your safety stop switch on yeah. there. I guess you have to get this to comply with all those things. I suppose that's quite a, a job in itself, isn't it? To get all those international safety requirements, if there ever were such a thing. Absolutely. And, and one of the changes with this work centre from previous versions is we have to be far more controlled about the products that we can use the, uh, the tool with. The original work centre, you could put any circular saw in there, mm. for instance. You wouldn't get that through modern certification now. It's, it has to be for specific models and specific setups. So uh, it, there's a lot more control. So what, to be taken if, if, if you, supposing, you know, for sake of argument, you own a Bosch circular saw, if you were trying to get certification for that, you'd have to put it every single model, every single make through a certification process uh, to get it through there. Absolutely. Which would be an expensive process I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, around ten thousand dollars a time. Blimey. And there's a lot of saws out there. So yeah. basically you, you, you get the certification for your saw, yeah. but you say this will fit any saw. We'll, we'll fit with other products. Okay, actually, fine, no, that's that's good. Okay, so we start off with this. Is this what it comes with? Yeah, so it standard? comes with a clamping table there. So you've got your standard holes there that'll take uh, bench dogs so you can yeah. uh, clamp stuff down and, and, and work on there. You could put a vacuum extraction underneath yeah. or something like that if you're using for a yeah. sanding table. Do you do those bench dogs? Do you try uh, we sell them through some of our partner products. Yeah. So through uh, okay. bench dog and through Silverline that we okay. provide those products and we'll right. have a Triton set available as an accessory. Okay. 
The whole concept of the work center is that these modules are easy to swap in and swap out, so to change between different uses for the table. So you've got just two simple latches, one either side, click those back, and this module will lift straight out. Ah, okay. So yeah. it's an easy drop in for each piece. Once yeah. that's in, again, lock either side, and that's in and held in firmly into the table. Yeah, that's really simple actually. You've got a set of pins around the edge of each module so that you can actually set the height on there and adjust that so it fits your table exactly and you can level that right the, right the way down yes. with a simple allen key. Okay, so if we put a steel rule across there, we'd be able to absolutely level that through? Yeah. Okay. So you're yeah. a completely flat surface yeah. on, uh, right the way through. That's for real precision workers, isn't it? Again, Absolutely. that comes back, I reckon that's more for your woodies than it is for your site carpenters, yeah, yeah that kind of degree of uh, adjustment, but, but yeah. The ideal bit being that once that's set for that module and that table, then it is literally click in, click out. Oh, okay, you, you don't have to switch. do it every time, obviously, yeah. No, it's yeah. in and done. Good. Okay, so that's, that's the first incarnation. That's how it comes standard, yeah. if you, you get it. And then we're gonna add some exciting bits that you've made, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So we'll take that one out. And the first optional accessory we have is the router table. So simply sit that in the, the pins at the top there, drop it in. And that's it. Two clicks, locked in and done. So. We've got a, a full function fence. It comes with a set of feather boards um, here for the vertical adjustment. There's also a set of uh, feather boards here for a horizontal pressure as well that yeah. run in this T-track. So the T-track yeah. here, this aluminum extrusion is a standard one. So okay. there's a whole bunch of accessories out there for various router tables That's that will right. fit yeah. with this. And yeah. if you've already got them, you can yeah. use them on this yeah. table. And we've uh, got a very low friction but hard wearing surface on the table here. So that means that your timber is going to move on there, your workpiece is going to slide on there quite easily, um, but it's not going to wear on this surface. And we have okay. the same surface on the front of the face of yeah. the, uh, the fences here. So we've got an adjustable um, dust and uh, protection shield there. So with that closed down and yeah. the dust extraction from the rear there, yeah. you're going to get a really clean uh, working with the, with the product, etc. Two stage locking on the top there, these little cruciform adjustments so that you can move the fence into the precise uh, place that you want that set up and some gauges on the back there so that you can yeah. read off distance uh, if you want to take that from the uh, scales on the rear there. Yeah, are they pretty accurate those gauges? They're all... Yeah, they're pretty spot on, but what you find most people tend to measure from the cutter itself yeah, yeah, that's because what... it, that's where, where your, uh, your yeah. true comes from. So you can move that around set those and uh, lock them off or just do them just finger tight. I know. And then we have some little nudge adjusters at the back here. Oh, okay. Um, so you can put those up close, lock them into the table and then that'll, that'll just move the fence uh, fractions of a millimeter one way or t'other. Right. And just move it in and out. So you get absolute precision on your, uh, on your fence setup. And when they're locked down, they're pretty good. They don't move about. No, all. once that's in a lock, that's it. They're I noticed that you've solid. got the Triton router on here, as yeah. you would, but but if somebody hasn't got a Triton router, how does it work with other routers? Uh, so an alternative router will fit. There's a plate on the bottom there that it's uh, uh, fitted into. With the Triton router, it's a simple bayonet fit, yeah. but that uh, plate will take another router. But we're in the similar positions we were discussing before. The product is certified for use with the Triton oh, routers, okay. and if you're like, optimised for that. Yeah. So yeah. we have a little slot here with a hole already pre-drilled and there are different settings depending on the router that you take. So the Triton routers have the table lift built in to the yeah, router. Yeah, I know. So by setting that hole you can change the cutter height. So you put the key through the hole and then wind it up, up and down and rather down. than having to go underneath and, yeah, and play around. Yeah, okay, that's good. So, so that hole wouldn't necessarily coincide with other routers. So Not necessarily, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, but that, that, that built-in table lift is, a, is pretty unique mm. for, uh, for, for Triton. Yeah, okay. Um, one of the features that we've got here, because a very regular use of the uh, table is for uh, edge planing and getting a gun yes. barrel straight Absolutely. edge on a piece of wood. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the features we've added here is the ability to offset this fence um, with some simple preset depths. So we have these little four-way adjusters that live in the back of the fence here. Yeah. And they've got um, four settings there from half a mil up to two mil. Yeah. And by loosening off the fence here, 
there's a little uh, gap that you can feed these into. Oh, okay. And that will basically pack out. Yeah, like shimming out, if you like. Yeah, it'll yeah. pack out that, that uh, exit fence to hold it so that when you're, you're planning through, you've got the support after it's come past the cutter at the right depth. Yes, yeah, yeah, got it, okay. So it's a really simple way to get a very, very Absolutely. accurate uh, planed edge on a piece of timber. Yeah, yeah, that's clever. So two shim, you have to set them both the same. Yeah, obviously. set them both the same. Otherwise Just you get a wonky. Sim simply fit those in there, and by rotating them, you'll get the different uh, depths yeah, of half yeah. mil. Are they marked on there? I've got my glasses on yeah. at the moment, so they're on, on there. The front okay. there. So right. the, the side that you want, you put that out to the front. Uh, and slide that in there, and that packs out that shim to the same okay. depth, distance. Yeah. So it's really it's a full function router table. Um, all the sort of functionality you've had on the on the previous uh, Triton tables in terms of its accuracy, flexibility, what you're able to do with it. If you take the fence right off, you've got a socket there for a starting pin. So if you're going to do freehand work on, that, oh okay, uh, you can do that yeah, on here as yeah. well. But you've got a solid position to uh, to rest to again and to work, yeah. work from yeah. uh, and yeah. again it, with the Triton router you've got dust extraction top and bottom so it gives you a clean work environment as well yeah so you put a two-piece on your hose and, and yeah you're and away with you it can, uh, work, yeah you know, really but, I'd say that looking at this and looking at other router tables purpose-made router tables that don't do anything else there's really no compromise here is there I mean sometimes you think okay portable one that does other jobs multifunction it's not as good as a purpose-made router table, but I can't think of any features that you haven't covered, really, on this. So well, absolutely, that was the idea, was to, to, to have everything that you'd want on a full-featured router table, everything that enhances the work of our existing routers, which have such a great reputation, yeah. but to make it portable and to make the table multi-use and flexible so that you can take it on site if you need a work surface, you've got a clamping table that you yeah. can work stuff up on. If you need to do some mouldings or some planing or some clear out work, then you can change over and put the router table in, it's no problem. So that's routing. So that's routing, and, and then we have... And what do we do? We just unlock that, unplug it, obviously, again, and whip, it, whip and that out. And then lift that out. And away you go. If I was using this on the short legs yep. w without this extended down. If I just wanted it on the floor, I'll put it in the back of my van. Have I got to take that out every time to... No, there's enough depth set there between the top of the table and the bottom of the leg so that you can leave either the router in there or the saw unit uh, and you can use it uh, on, the on, floor. The, on the floor or yeah. on those short legs, yeah. no problem yeah, at all. Yeah, that, because that's important actually because the last thing you want every day is like having to take all those bits out and, yeah. and break it down. Yeah. yeah, and everything folds in and locks in in one place so it's not like you're having to, to bolt things together when you want to use yeah. it. Yeah, neat, very neat. So what else have you got to go in this hole? So the next one I've got to show you just as a, as, as a model really is our contractor saw. You say as a model because we're at the time of filming, we're getting a sneak preview of this before you launch it. Absolutely, it's still, on the market. still in development. This one's not uh, a finished product yet, but this is to basically to show you where we're going with this. So yeah. here is our contractor saw. Again, same idea. Drop that in, plug that into the switch box, um, and, and lock it in, and that's it. We now have a table saw that we can take on site. Um, simple adjustments at uh, this end. So that you can bring that up to square yeah. and lock that off. And you can you can obviously you can cut at any uh, any angle that you want to. You can set that to uh, degrees. Or, uh, what are these yeah. little things here? So these are the landed kickback. So as the oh yeah, uh, yeah. the tool feeds through, uh, the timber feeds through, it can't uh, push back. Very much a requirement for the U.S. market. Yeah. And glo uh, trying to global supplier now. We're supplying in the U.S. and Canada, Australia, South Africa. So we have to build our products to comply with all these different markets and it's very much a requirement of theirs. Yeah, uh, for because that, that actually is the bit that surprises a lot of bits with uh, a lot of people with table saws, isn't yeah. it? Is that, that yeah, When it absolutely. kicks back on you, yeah. Um, and obviously with that uh, fitted, we have a, a fence. A fence, yeah. I was wondering where the fence was going to come from. So in common with um, previous versions of the Triton Work Centre, the fence actually adjusts um, at both sides, so you can uh, set that fence in there, lock that off. So what would you do, measure off the blade or, or off the...? the uh, there's a couple of marks on here, one is uh, for the uh, uh, lead edge of the blade. Oh, okay. 
Got and it. The other is for the blade when it's on 45 degrees. Right, so, so it's the, the black one or whatever. And yeah. uh, on the, the finished version, there is a tape that runs through on the top of each of these rails. So you can set that an exact distance. Oh, so that, that's like that. that's to be added later. We're looking at the prototype, so or not the prototype, but an earlier yeah. So there's, there's a, a, okay. a scaled tape that runs through there that's set yeah. in factory set, so that yeah. once that's in there, you can get an exact distance from there. So you'd want to be measuring, that would be the distance from the face of the fence to the face of the blade. Yeah. Um, so you get an exact if you want 10 mil, you set 10 mil there, that's what you yeah. get left over in your gotcha. uh, in your piece there. Yeah. So, um, uh, a fully functional. Uh, and how do they lock, how does this fence lock? So you've Where's got, the... sorry, on this, this side, you've got this uh, lock down here. So there'll be two, one either side, so that when it's in oh, okay. position, yeah. um, that will actually drop into the rail. So I see. close up to the, to the saw, mm -hmm. this uh, particular lock wouldn't be in the right place which is why you have a secondary ah, one uh, yeah. there. So further back, now that's going to lock off there. This so so off uh, if I remember rightly, when I looked at this way back, what, we, what, what did you say, 1976? 76 was the original yeah, one, yeah. That can't be true. Um, <laughs> so that, that was, came out of Australia, didn't it? Yeah, it was originally a, uh, an Australian guy called George Lewin, and mm. he came up with the first model with a circular saw bolted in underneath. And it was almost like a Dragon's Den type program that he that's went on. It, yeah. Initially showed this thing and his order book went through the roof. Really? And that's where the business started. Yeah. So it started with the work centre and later into work support products like the original Triton Super Jaws. Yeah, I remember that. Well, and, still got one. Yeah. A product that we're still really well known yeah. for, the Super yeah. Jaws and the multi-stand. Mm. Um, and then uh, and, and the router table that they made was an addition to the work centre. And in around uh, 1999, 2000, they started making the power tools to go into these yeah. systems. So that's when the original routers came and our circ saws. And now we have a range of planes and sanders and a whole bunch of other mm. products. Which are pretty heavy duty. I mean, I've used Triton, you know, sanders and, and uh, planers, you know, in the yeah. past. And I've been pretty impressed, I've got to say, by, you know, just how robust they are, you know. The uh, good Triton products are not tribute or, or copy products. No. They're, they're designed... Uh, here in the UK now, actually in York, is really? where we do the uh, design, the case design, and all the motor specification, etc. Mm. And then they're made for us by authorised factories uh, on our behalf. But all the design and everything is, is controlled from the UK now. Is it? Yeah. So all this kit has been refined from those original ones, but it's now designed specifically in the UK. Yeah. And you're going to add, I guess, you've got the router, you've got We've got the, the, table, the saw. table saw. We have a project saw kit uh, that I'll, we'll put up here in, in a moment. And, and then really, with this modular concept, the, the doors are open for us to do a whole bunch of different yeah. options, really, depending on what we can find a market for. And, uh, you know, what from our research, what people actually want us to be able to do yeah. with this. Yeah, so I guess your end users are going to let you know, aren't I they? Think so. uh, pretty quickly, you know, you probably see them trying to adapt the table with their own... Yeah, in, and, in and the best ideas that they come up with are the ones that we'll commercialise yeah, and, yeah. and turn into a product yeah. for everybody. Or Nick, if you like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> was ever thus, was ever thus. But no, no, it, it seems, as I say, pretty well thought out, you know, from the original concept. Yeah. And these these side supports you've got here. Yeah, I mean, so if I wanted to stick a bit of 8x4 sheet through here, could I do that or not? Um, you can do. There's, there's this um, side support and the outfit support give you a little bit of extras for, for, for larger work. But there is, um, as we have on our existing work centre, we have a maxi slide table which goes on the side. It's like a uh, scaffold type tube oh, yeah. uh, with rollers on the top. So you can extend it and put an 8 And it's got legs sheet. on it, obviously. Yeah, with legs little on adjustable side, legs, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you could then put an 8 foot uh, yeah. sheet through. Yeah. I guess a lot of people are going to be using track saws for that. Yeah. And you also do a track saw now, don't you? Yeah, we do a very popular track saw, which uh, does extremely well for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that really is the portable uh, saw of choice for a lot of trades yeah. right now. That's what you see out in sight all the time. So maybe that you know need to shove a big sheet through isn't going to happen quite as much as it, yeah. as it used to. Okay, okay so next, what have we got we next? Have, we'll take those out. That one, I'll just oh, rotate the right. blade. Oh, yeah. Do you have to do that every time? Um, we do on this uh, prototype one, yeah. And on the on the, the finished one, one you no, won't. It'll come straight through. Now I've seen this before. Yeah, so this is um, an adaptation of 
uh, a product that we do in one of our other brands, uh, which is GMC. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, and we have a flooring or laminate flooring saw, and, and this is an adaptation from that. So the product itself, this project saw, can be used in the work centre. So you've got a, a nice working height, mm. and it's uh, you know a comfortable place to work. Yeah. Or you can still use it independently. So the idea is it's for cutting laminate floor, small boards, yeah. or things like loft boards. And because you can use it out of the work centre, you could, if you wanted to, you could take this up into the loft to work because it'll fit through the hatch. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. it's, a, you know, it's a yeah. lightweight, yeah. relatively easy table to use. Yeah, so there's nothing on the on the bottom of it. It'll actually sit, it'll sit, it'll flat. sit on the deck. Oh, that's yeah. quite nice, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, can we, again, spin this round just for yeah. the camera, just so that I can let the viewers see where we're looking at the working edge of it then, and they can see what's involved. So we've got... So what oh, we've got here it. is um, a laminate flooring saw, so you can put your stock across here, you can lock that off and get a nice right angle cut. It's got a laser sight on there, so you can see the line where your cut Oh, it's got a laser, through. yeah. Uh, runs in through from yeah. here. Um, and then you put your, your um, wood in there and simply draw the saw across it yeah. um, to, uh, to cut. But one of the adaptations that we've made for the work centre is there's a little lock button here, so you can lock that saw in a single position. Ah. That means then by taking the, the fence out of the way, you can then throw three through sheets or small uh, pieces of work Got it. that way and in, in as, as, as a rip cut. Yeah, now that fence that you showed me before, would that go back on? Uh, yeah, you can put the fence on, because the fence will work either side, yeah. you can fit the fence on here and you could use that as a, as a fence to through. cut to. Yeah. Um, and you have a fully enclosed blade here so the the blade is within this guard that lifts up as the as the sheet comes mm. to it mm. and dust extraction from there so it'll work very cleanly it's very safe and we think there's also a, uh, a saw not just for uh, doing the flooring or, or uh, for site use it's also a very you know, like safe small table saw yeah. for someone who's doing project work or maybe kitchen fitters, shop fitters yeah, who want to do a few mouldings. I was thinking stuff. of kitchen fitters because all those mouldings that the pelmets and cornices that they've got to do around the edges and, and so on and just nipping a bit off, that would yeah, be absolutely. ideal wouldn't it? And, and because again all enclosed, all very safe, mm. it's, a, it's a simple first. Yeah. Uh, and I, I love the fact that you can actually take it and use it without the table because there's going to be times when you just want to run in and and do the odd bit off the top of somebody's worktop or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And these yeah. big um, solid rail bearings that we've got in here means that it runs really, really smoothly, really easily. Yeah. And and completely, uh, completely straight and up. Yeah. There's no. There's no. Well, I suppose. It, yeah. Okay. There's a tiny bit of play in there, isn't there? But it's not. It's not going to produce. Not enough to, to really. To I, I suppose that in actual fact you'd have to do that to do that. But yeah. when, when you run it the down idea like is that, to, to pull it from yeah. here, it's yeah. got a handle like a saw, and literally yeah. you to pull it straight to your yeah. clean cut yeah. saw. Yeah. So that's that, where we are in terms of the modules for the work centre, and after that, really, it's down to people's imagination, really. What's that? That handle at the side. So that is when you've when you've got that out. If I lift that one unlocked, that in the centre. Well, that's the handle to carry it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've got something to lift the thing with. Yeah. It's good. That's that's the key, isn't it? Portability, and not everybody's got massive great vans, so they want to be able to stack Absolutely. it all the way. And to give yourself a, a safe working space, uh, a, you know, a, a decent height, the flexibility to change between modules and do different things, um, depending on the work that you've got. And it's a system that's going to grow and grow, isn't it, for you, I think? Absolutely. So yeah. this is the, the TWX7 is the work centre. That's the, the seventh generation work centre. These are the, uh, the original mo uh, modules for it, but yeah, there'll be more and more to come. Thank you very much for showing it to us. Um, it looks like it's going to do well for you. I mean, uh, we don't want to talk about prices here because obviously they're changing. There'll be all kinds of deals going. But, you know, I've seen these before and they're, they're, they're sort of, yeah, big money. Are we, are we talking about a big ticket here or not? No, absolutely not. The idea is to, to make this, um, you know, in, in the regions where it's a sensible price for people to be taken on site um, without feeling too precious about it. It's yeah. designed to be mobile. Everything will fold up and go in the back of a pickup or in the back of a van, you know, mm. uh, very easily with the tools left in. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, the pricing when it's released, I think it'll be pleasantly surprised. Well, I know the rest of your range, you know, the Triton range is not, not top dollar anyway, is it? I mean, it's good, what I'd say, value for money. Yeah. 
kit, you know, that does the job lasts and uh, and doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, hopefully. Absolutely, yeah, it's, yeah. it's well specified and, uh, and, and the, the pricing makes it sensible for people. It's great to come down here and see what is now the seventh incarnation of this bit of kit. Goodness me, I don't know how many more I'll live to see, but it, uh, it looks like you're getting there. I mean, this is what they call a policy of continuous development, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's great. And we've got an early look at it, and uh, hopefully by the time this video reaches you, this will be in your tool stores and ready to go. And we look forward to actually seeing it out on site, running a bit of timber for it, which will be nice.